so cool. Oh, there he goes. Forming over the last few years. There's so much light. Hey, but yeah, cool. Beautiful underneath, and then the sea cucumbers are complete. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful day down under. Today we are going to be taking a look at some of the sea life that I see down here in the rock pools. Let's check it out and see what we can find. This is the end of the beach here. This is where like all the really big rock pools gather. And I've watched this little rock pool area for the last three years. I've watched it grow. And look at all of these little coral plates that have been forming over the last few years. There's so much life in here. There's another little tiny coral plate. That's a big one there, that's really cool. Where's some more? There's more down here. There's tons of this blue uh, sea bush sort of stuff. It's so pretty, so awesome to see. There's another little sea bush down there. It's just amazing to see. The water is always so, so clear here. I love it. So beautiful here. It's just so much life. Tons of tiny fish down in there. Obviously hiding away now because they see me. But it's incredible. Very often this is where I see all of the big pin cushion starfish I sometimes see. Like even just below me here. I've got another coral bush or coral plate developing there. Just imagine all the life hiding underneath all these rocks. So awesome. So, since the start of today's video, I've found two bonnet shells and both of them have been broken. So I'm hoping this one here might be whole. It's my third try of a bonnet shell today. Let's see. Oh, it's dark. Holy moly. Guys, comment down below right now if you think it's going to be whole or broken. Oh, look at that rock. It's interesting. I reckon it's going to be whole. <laughs> there we go. Yes, it's whole. Heck yeah. If you got that right, if you commented correct, I'll send you five cookies. That is so cool. Wow. Third time's a charm, huh? Pretty awesome. Beautiful. Got a little growth line there. Nice tip. Awesome. Been walking all through these rocks here. Haven't been here for too long, maybe about 15 minutes. Come down here a little bit. Looks like we have a live little hairy triton. I hope it's live anyway. It looks very yeah. alive. And yeah, definitely alive. Look at that big old operculum. We've got a little live droop shell there. Let's move him off so he doesn't fall off from high up. That's beautiful. Look at that lip. Look at those colors right there. Beautiful underneath. And then you look on the top side of the shell and it's super like battered and algae filled. Really nice operculum, really nice mouth. Fantastic condition. Oh, have a good one, buddy. I'm actually going to put him away from the sun here and in further into this water there. Just make sure he's all good. We have another sea hare drying up here after getting caught in the high tide. It's a shame too because he was so close to this little water hole here. Super dried out. Wow. That's probably one of the worst I've ever seen. Always got to be gentle as I can picking him up. Look at that. Super swelled into itself. If that makes sense but uh lucky we were here i'll probably see about five more of these today watch the transition as he comes straight back to life make him or help him get stuck on that rock so he's got somewhere to walk there you go buddy straight away straight back to life oh what a legend. Stay safe, mate. Show you guys what these are. If you're new to the channel and shelling, then you should probably watch this part. This down here is a live Hebrew cone. So if you're new to shelling and seashells and everything, cone snails are dangerous. 
Now, the difference between the cone snails are textile cones, they have enough uh, toxins to kill you, whereas Hebrew cones uh, usually just have enough sting in them to be much like a bee sting. But remember, some people around the world are allergic to bees and their stings. Just like these Hebrew cones, it is highly, highly, highly unlikely that they will kill you. But remember, everyone's body reacts differently to toxins and poisons and everything like that. So people can have an allergic reactions to them, which can make them, you know, deadly. So basically, always be careful with cone shells, no matter what they look like, and never handle them if you don't know what they are and that sort of thing and just really be careful when seeing a cone shell basically so that's my little take on cone shells always be careful with them because you never know how your body is going to react you guys i hope you can see it all right this is a dusky flathead Many fishermen uh, like to catch these guys. Wow, I can't believe I've seen one. Hopefully you guys can see it all right because they blend into the sand because they sort of bury themselves halfway into the sand. How cool is that? They do that to stay hidden from prey. I've never ever seen one down here at the beach. That is awesome. That looks like about, oh, about 22 centimeters I'd say dusky flathead wow they're pretty like fishermen I hear love to catch these guys pretty small fella can't believe I've seen one down here in the shallows awesome see how well he blends in there so cool oh there he goes Wow, flathead, so cool for me to see. I've been seeing so many live animals recently in these pools. Wow, we'll let him go there. See what I mean, you guys? There's so much life in here. Like there's two more bigger fish there. Look how well, one more, one more uh, clip right here. I want to show you guys how well he blends in there. Can you see him? Look at that. That is so awesome to see. Wow. Look at that. All right, buddy. You have a good one. Stay safe, buddy. Oh, that's cool. see every single day here in the dozens maybe even hundreds are sea cucumbers we have one down here that's actually got its eating antennas out now they eat from these things here they're basically like long vacuum vacuums with sensors all over wait that's a wintel trap what i was literally just talking about this cucumber and find a wintel trap are you kidding me just as i was looking at the antennas that they eat from there's a wintel trap but anyway that is a sea cucumber, right? So they basically suck up all of the algae and that sort of thing and use them as filters as well. So sea cucumbers are completely harmless to us just like sea hares. They are bottom feeders as well. So what's cool about these is when they feel threatened, they release a very, very stick substance, which is actually their intestines. Now they do this, so the animal that's trying to harm them gets all stuck up inside of this webbing like substance so they can make a quick getaway now yes it is their intestines that they're shooting out but they actually regenerate it really really quickly so it doesn't a common animal to the channel are these sea hare fellas if you are new to the channel we find about oh, I'd say 30 of these fellas every single day down here in the little tide pools and very occasionally, actually maybe three or four times a day, they'll get stuck up into the high tide points. So when the tide drops down and these guys are still in the 
high tide rock pools and the tide goes down, these guys are stuck in there and they start to dry up. But luckily most of the time I am there to help them back into the water holes and live another day. But yeah, I see these guys absolutely everywhere. They don't hurt you, they can't bite us, they're just bottom feeders so they eat things like algae and all the tiny, tiny micro shells on the floor, things like that. And whenever they feel threatened, they'll release a purple ink as a disguise so they can make a quick getaway. Pretty cool, right? So this guy's actually suctioned to my hand. Gotta be careful here. There you go, mate. They get pretty big as well. This is definitely one of the smaller ones I've seen today. They usually get about double or triple this size. Oh, see ya, mate. He wants to climb back onto me. There you go. Help him get attached to the floor. There we go. I call these the rabbits of the sea. Oh. All right, he'll be right there. As we were talking about textile, I mean, not textile, Hebrew cones, might have a little empty one here for myself. Maybe, yeah, it is. Also, a very easy way you can tell if a cone shell is empty is when it has rocks or dirt or things like debris inside that lip because snails like us like to keep their homes clean so and they well basically they have to move through it a lot through the day to move around and slither around and find food of course um, but yeah pretty cool so if you're ever unsure if a cone snail or a cone shell is empty then just look in the lip really carefully if there's rocks and debris it's most likely empty and if not if you see a meaty sort of colorful thing and it's got the snail inside. Isn't that right, Mr. Sea Hare? Young fella. How are you? You are the 99th one I've seen today. Very cool. This is pretty cool as well, an oyster shell. Someone's obviously shucked this and got the meat out from it, but look at what it's surrounded by. I think these are little anemones. Pretty cool though. It's definitely stuck in there. Sweet. 